I see you've uh, met my friends, monarch butterflies. Well, this is an amazing time of year for these butterflies, a super generation. And you can see that we've got a number of them feeding on these plants, the verbena. They love the verbena because it's got a little platform that, for them to sit on and they can dip their proboscis into those long tubular flowers, getting the nectar they need for that long journey down to Mexico. So my name is Karin Davidson Taylor. Welcome to Royal Botanical Gardens and our beautiful rose garden with all these amazing companion plants that are here just to support all sorts of different insects, including pollinators. Now this garden has not only food plants for adults, uh, but it also has milkweed, which is a very important plant for the eggs and the caterpillars. It's the only plant that monarchs will lay their eggs and caterpillars on. Those eggs are absolutely tiny and they will be laid on the bottom on the leaf, the top of the leaf, but eventually what will happen is they will hatch after about three to five days, giving us these little caterpillars. So actually this caterpillar isn't new. This caterpillar is about four or five days old and eating quite a lot. And that's what they do. They eat and eat and eat and eat. They eat nearly 3,000 times their weight in food. Now, oh yes. So if you compare it to a human child, that would be like a six month old child being the size of a bus. So this takes about, you know, nine to 14 days for them to get to be a, a good size where they're going to then create their chrysalis. And the chrysalis, and I've got an example of one right here. And if you look carefully, you might even be able to see the black of the wings. So the chrysalis that we have here, this one will it close or the butterfly will emerge in about three days, I expect. When that happens, we will be tagging these butterflies. We don't tag any other ones. We tag the, the uh, super generation, this generation of butterflies. These are the ones that are flying down to Mexico, hopefully making their way up to Texas if they survive and then that's where the next generations will start in March. So tagging. Normally when I, so when I tag, I've got these tiny little tags here and you can see that they've got four letters, three numbers. If someone ever finds a tag, a butterfly with a tag on it, they need to report those to Monarch Watch. That's the organization that is that is uh, collecting this data and this data collected by a wide variety of citizen scientists, possibly like you, will be available to, to researchers. So I can tell that this is a male. That little tiny whisper of a dot right there is the same when the wings are open as that dot right there. I'm going to actually I'm going to put the tag on this special cell called the discal cell and it's only 0.006 grams no more than that about one percent of the butterfly's body weight. I'm just gently gently holding my finger over that so that it allows the adhesive to attach to the wing. It doesn't hurt the butterfly. It doesn't damage the butterfly. And then I'll record that information onto my, onto my sheet and then I'll submit that to Monarch Watch. I'm going to put my butterfly over here and maybe we'll be lucky, maybe it'll hang around, I don't know, but I'll let you see the tag. So if ever you see this tag or any tag like this, come on little guy, you can, there we go, okay. So I'm going to let it go and it will go, I can feel it's ready to go. There it goes. So it's flying south now. It's going to go towards Lake, uh, Lake Erie uh, and, and possibly over to Point Pelee, where there have been um, masses of clusters noted in the garden. Ah, there's a beauty right there. So, so this super generation is now on its way to Mexico 
these amazing animals and their amazing journey um, traveling all this way, all the way down to Mexico and back. So thanks very much for joining me here at Royal Botanical Gardens and learning a little bit about these amazing monarchs.